Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to compare and order numbers. Comparing and ordering numbers. When comparing and ordering numbers, you want to keep in mind something. You're really just changing all of your numbers into the same type of number, either fraction, decimal, or percent. Then you compare. Example number one. Our directions want us to write a less than, greater than, or equal to sign. But first we need to figure out which number is greater or less or are the numbers equal to each other. This example is relatively simple because both of our numbers are decimals. If I were to ask you to compare these two numbers to money, you'd probably be able to tell pretty quickly which number is larger or which number is smaller okay I'm going to stack the numbers on top of each other to make it clear I have seven and two tenths I also have seven and two hundredths so these don't have the same number of decimal spaces but I could just add a zero in here to make them the same. Now like I explained, if I if you were to say these two amounts are money, which one is more, which one is less? You can tell really quickly. This is seven dollars and twenty cents. That's more than seven dollars and two cents. Okay? So sometimes when you're dealing with decimals, if you have to add an extra decimal and this can only happen at the very far right of the number as the last position or in the last position, then you can compare the two numbers easier than before. So I can pretty easily see that 7 and 2 tenths is larger than 7 and 2 hundredths. So I'm going to draw my inequality symbol facing the 7 and 2 tenths. Let's move on to example number 2. Example number 2. This one isn't quite as easy as our last example. We're dealing with a fraction here and a decimal here. Our first slide in our directions, it told us that we need to make our numbers in the same form, either fraction, decimal, or percent. That means both numbers need to be fractions, both numbers need to be decimals, or both numbers need to be percent. It does not matter what you choose to change them to, but whatever it is, both numbers need to be in the same form. Right now we have a fraction and we have a decimal, so we got to fix something. I don't know if you remember. But to change a fraction into a decimal, you have to divide the denominator into the numerator. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I could possibly do that. But I could make both numbers fractions. That means I would change this 8,500. And the way to do that is to take your 85 and turn it into a fraction by putting the 85 in a numerator position with a 100 below. If you aren't so familiar with equivalent fractions and decimals, you may want to check out my equivalent fractions and decimal video. It clarifies what I'm talking about. I'm not going to go into a ton of details of how to do that step here because that's really a whole nother topic. But check out that video and it'll give you step by step details of how to do that. I think that I am going to change my fraction into a decimal. So I'm going to leave my 85 hundredths alone. To change my fraction into a decimal, I need to divide with my denominator on the outside and my numerator on the inside. I cannot divide 3 into 2, so I have to add a decimal 0. My decimal also gets brought directly up. 3 cannot go into 2, so I'm going to write a 0 in here. 3 can go into 20, and it goes in 6 times. And it is 18. I'm going to subtract and get 2. Also, if you're not so familiar with long division, you might want to check out my long division video as well. It goes over how to do all of this. Write in an extra 0, bring it down. 3 goes into 20. Oh, that's the same as like this. Okay, 6. That's 18. Okay, it looks like we're going to have a pattern here. We're going to add another zero, bring it down. Yes, this becomes a pattern. So we're just going to have six repeating. So the decimal value for this side is six repeating. 
So, if I have 6 tenths versus 85 hundredths, which is more? Let's see, I can line these up. Okay, if I were to think of this as money, I can see that this would be 66 cents, this would be 85 cents. I know that 85 cents is more than 66 cents. So I know that my inequality should face the 85 hundredths, okay? This 66 is the same thing as the two thirds, but just in a different form. So this 66 really represents the two thirds when we're comparing. Draw my inequality symbol in, and we're good to go. Let's move on to example number three. Okay, this time we have a percent to work with. We have 45%, and we're comparing it to 50 hundredths, or 5 tenths. Okay, I choose to change my percent into a decimal. To change a percent into a decimal, you actually have a very simple step. You remove your percent sign, you place your decimal point at the end of your percent, and you move your decimal over two spaces to the left, and you write your decimal in. So whenever you see a number like this, I could add a zero out here. So this is the same as zero and 45 hundredths and for my second number it's 0 and 50 hundredths so if these two things were money which would be more 50 cents 50 cents is more than 45 cents so my inequality symbol is going to face my 50 hundredths let's move on to example number 4 example number 4 okay we have a percent this time and a fraction this time. I could change my fraction into a decimal and then change that decimal into a percent to match this percent. Or I could change this percent into a fraction. A percent is pretty much the same thing as a fraction but it's in a different form. 10% is the same thing as 1 over 10. If you can't make that adjustment quite so clear, you could take this percent to a decimal and then from a decimal you're going to go back to a fraction. If you're not sure how I went from 10% to 1 tenth, that would be your best bet. Let me show you how to do it that way. 10% Remember like in our last slide, to go from a percent to a decimal we just move our decimal over two places to the left and drop the percent sign. So this 10% ends up being 10 hundredths. 10 hundredths in a fraction format would be 10 over 100. Then we simplify. These zeros cross off and we end up with one tenth. So I pretty much did all that in my head. I know that 10% is the same as one tenth, so I just went straight there. So if you can do it in your head, you can just write that out. If you're not so sure, you may want to make your percent into a decimal like I did, then make that decimal into a fraction and simplify. Okay, so now we're comparing one tenth and one sixth. The problem with this is our denominators are different, so we need to get common denominators. 1 over 10 and 1 over 6. The least common multiple between 10 and 6 is 30. So I'm going to change these to have denominators of 30. So in order to do that, I have to ask myself to go from 10 to 30, what did I do to the 10? I multiplied it by 3. Whatever I do to the denominator, I must also do to the, to the numerator. So 1 times 3 is also 3. 
to go from 6 to 30, what did I do to the 6? I multiplied by 5. Whatever I do to the denominator, I must also do to the numerator. So 1 times 5 is 5. Now I can compare this number with this number more easily. 3 over 30 or 5 over 30, which is more. If you have a pizza that's cut up into 30 sections and you have 3 of those slices, is that more or less than a pizza cut up into 30 sections and having 5 slices? That's less. The 5 slices is more. The 5 slices came from the 1 6, so the 1 6 is more. So, although this looks like we took a lot of steps here, we really just had to put our two numbers in the same form, and it's up to you which form you want to use. I didn't have to turn both of them into fraction forms. I could have turned both of them into a decimal form or both into a percent, but I chose fraction. So basically, you just need to do whatever you need to do to get both numbers in both forms, and it's going to be different for each individual example. Let's move on to example number five. Okay, for this example, we are going to order these numbers from least to greatest, okay? In order to do that, all of our numbers need to be in the same form. They either need to be all decimals, all percents, or all fractions. I like working with decimals. This number is already in decimal form, so I don't need to do anything to it. The 72%, I do need to do something to it. I need to move my decimal over two spaces. It will end there. So I end with 0 and 72 hundredths. For my 7 over my 12, remember to take a fraction to a decimal. You must divide. So it's going to be 12 that goes into 7. You can't do that, so you have to add a decimal 0. Bring your decimal up. 12 goes into 70 how many times? 5 times, and that's 60. And you subtract. You get 10. Add a 0, bring it down. How many times does 12 go into 100? You know what? I just looked at something. Our numbers over here are 0 and 75 hundredths, 0 and 72 hundredths, and then I have this is, there's a zero here, zero and five tenths. This is already enough for me to know where it's going to fall. So this is a nice little thing about ordering numbers. You don't have to complete all of your division all the time. As long as you have enough decimal places to see how far you have, then you're good. So I'm going to add a zero in because it gives me an idea. This is enough to know. That this is like 75 cents if we were going to consider it money. This is 72 cents and this is 50 cents. Even though we didn't finish dividing, the very most that this one could have been was a 9. So the most this one could have been was 59. But I could already see that if this was going to be a decimal 5, that this decimal 5 is less than these other two. Because you already know that if we're in, if this is money form, if we have a 50 something cent. That's already less than 75 cents and 72 cents. So I really didn't have to finish here. So I saw that I could stop. Now, we're ordering from least to greatest. So which is the least? This one. But you must not write your answer in the form that you put it in. You need to write it in the form that they gave it to you. Because they asked you what's the order from least to greatest of these numbers, not of whatever number you created. They don't really want your number. They want the numbers that they gave. So. We're going to write the 7 twelfths first, then the smallest of these two numbers that are left are, is my 72 cents, which was derived from 72%. So remember, you write your answer in the way that they gave it to you. And then after that, we have our last number, 75 hundredths. So, 7 twelfths, 72%, and 75 hundredths is the order of the numbers from least to greatest. Let's move on to example number 6. Example number 6. Okay, we have three numbers again that we're going to order from least to greatest. We have 1 and 23 hundredths. This is a decimal form. 120%, and we have 3 twentieths. 
You've probably noticed already that I like working with decimals more than the other numbers. There is no right or wrong way. I feel like it's going to be easier for me to change to a decimal rather than changing the other things into the other formats. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change my 120%. And if you remember the rule, all we do is we move the decimal over two spaces to the left. So I go one and two. And there's my decimal. So this ends up looking like 1 and 20 hundredths. Now, to change my 3 twentieths into a decimal, I'm going to divide like I've done the other times. Remember, the denominator goes into the numerator. So that means the denominator is on the outside and the numerator is on the inside. 20 cannot go into 3, so I have to add a decimal 0. Bring my decimal up right at the beginning. Now, 20 does go into 30, and it's 1 time. And it is 20, so we subtract that. Get 10. Add a 0. Bring it down. Now, how many times does 20 go into 100? It goes in 5 times. Okay? And it goes in evenly, so I can subtract and get an even 0 and know that I'm done because there's nothing else to bring down. This has nothing out in front of my decimal, but it's the same thing as having a 0 out here. So if we were going to consider it money again, this would be like 15 cents. Okay? So I'm going to write this above here. Now, I can automatically see that this 15 cents or the original 3 twentieths is way less than the other numbers. The reason I can see that is because, again, if these three numbers are money, this is 15 cents, this is a dollar 20 cents, and this is a dollar 23 cents. So 15 cents is way less. So if we're ordering from least to greatest, I know I'm going to write this one first. But again, I'm going to write it in the form that they originally gave it to me in, not in the form that I made up. They didn't ask me to write my made up numbers in order from least to greatest they asked me to write the numbers that they gave in order from least to greatest so I'm not gonna write 15 hundredths down I'm gonna write 3 twentieths because the 15 hundredths represents the 3 twentieths the next smallest number would be the 1 in 20 hundredths which was originally the 120 percent And finally, our 1 in 23 hundredths is the largest number. So, these are our numbers listed in order from least to greatest. 3 twentieths, 120 percent, and 1 in 23 hundredths. That's my last example. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.